All right, guys, so against my better judgment and for the overall clean, fresh sake of the 1990 GT, I'm going the extra mile on this one. You know, I just, I love the shale color. It's so fresh and looks super, super clean inside the car that I needed to go ahead and dye the centers of these seats. You can see here on the left, this guy is fresh um, out of the car. I haven't done anything to this yet. And no matter how much I clean this seat up, there's no way I can get it anywhere near that color on the right. So this seat has been freshly dyed, painted, whatever it is that you wanna call it. Um, some of you might be skeptical about dyeing, painting your seats, but let me tell you, if you prep it properly, it will last. Don't get me wrong, there's always incidents. Your leather's gonna crack naturally. You could potentially scuff or crack your leather naturally. So it's not gonna fix those natural wear and tear problems. You can actually see the driver's side bolster here. There's a little bit of wear there. This is um, nothing that's beyond repair. Can definitely get that cleaned and fixed up. The other nice thing is that the original black bolsters here, this is where the high traffic area is anyways, not so much in the center section. So with that said, I'm more than confident that I can get these centers dyed up, painted up, and that it'll last. And most importantly, it's gonna match the rest of the interior and it's gonna look amazing. I know that full stop already. So uh, the front bolsters and the leg areas here, I have them off. I'm gonna do them in black just because uh, it's gonna be easier to, to dye, number one. Number two, I really wanna try and kind of enclose the gray and surround it by the black, uh, sort of to uh, mimic that of like the dash, because the top of the dash is black, then the carpet is black, and same thing with the door panel. So I just wanted to make sure that the theme is consistent throughout the whole car. And so right now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this seat prepped up. I have Dawn dish soap in this little squeeze bottle. Uh, I'm gonna go over probably two or three times and try and scrub this seat as much as I can. From there, scotch pad. Yes, scotch pad on the leather. Um, get it all scuffed down. Gonna wash it again. Then go over it with some brake clean tape and mask off all the leather. Yes, you can do that too. And uh, get this thing sprayed up. And it's gonna look just as good as that guy over there. So let's get at it. I wanna see this interior all together. All right guys, so we're back here with our seat. I washed this down thoroughly yesterday with soap and water. Then I went over it with a scotch pad and I let it sit overnight just because with all the moisture and everything in the leather, I wanna make sure that everything dries and um, just all evaporates to make sure that the surface is super, super clean before we go and we paint it with the SEM paint. So now is gonna be kind of the final prepping stages. Uh, just taking some brake clean and wiping around the edges to start of where we're going to be laying our masking tape down. So this is going to help with the tape and the stickiness. So masking an area like this isn't the easiest, but it can be done. I uh, just need to have a little bit of patience and some persistence. If for whatever reason you do get a little bit of bleed or overspray, you can get it off with a little bit of thinner. You don't want to leave it on too long, but just enough to get it off and clean up your area with a little bit of water after, and then everything will be good to go. Uh, but the better you do with your masking, the less of a chance that you're going to have to do that. So I'm going to go ahead now, mask all of this out, cover up the rest with plastic, and then we'll wipe everything down and get on with the dyeing process. guys so spent about 10 minutes masking this up give or take and uh, 
Just really want to take your time and make sure that you get the tape right down in the seam, you know, where that stitching is. Use your fingernail and make sure you push down really well because again, you don't want any of the paint bleeding uh, through the tape and causing you some hassles of trying to clean that up after the fact. So um, again, just make sure you go over all of your edges, make sure that, you know, any gaps. So I put an extra layer of tape um, on the outside here just to make sure, again, to prevent as much overspray as possible. Now I'm going to go ahead and cover up the rest of the seat with some plastic before we do a final wipe down with the brake clean, wipe everything off. And then we're going to do about three coats of the paint, dye, whatever you want to call it, onto the seats. One last rub down with the scotch pad, one more time with some brake clean, and then we'll get to spraying. About to apply our second coat, usually wait about five to 10 minutes in between this. Um, it dries extremely fast, which is nice, but with that said, it doesn't mean you can go ahead and just sit your ass in it. Once you've sprayed it 10 minutes later, I'm actually gonna let these seats sit for probably at least three days indoors, climate controlled, just to make sure that everything cures and does what it needs to do before I install them in the car. With that said, I still have the knee bolsters as well. I'm gonna do those all in black. So just waiting for a friend of mine to drop off an extra can of black paint that he has so I can get those done. So it does take a little bit of time, but the results are gonna be worth it. All right, so time for the third and final coat. If you haven't noticed, I'm going kind of in one direction and then I go back over in the opposite just to make sure that there's full and even coverage in between the seams and the stitching and everywhere else. So the color is really coming a long way. This final coat is just going to give it that last little touch of perfection. And you don't want to wait too long because the other thing about the tape is that once there's tape, or sorry, once there's paint on that tape, um, it almost starts to harden and it might start pulling away a little bit. So don't leave your time too long in between coats and then his oh, power went out and back on. That's entertaining. Um, so yeah, you wanna make sure you get your coats on in good time and then pull your masking off and see if you have any bleed over spots and get them touched up right away. All right, so I've given this about 15 minutes of dry time. Now's the moment of truth to uh, start peeling off all of the tape. Magically enough, there's a little bit of overspray right there. Not sure how it snuck into that bolster. And a little bit right there. So again, I'm gonna use really small shop towel and a little bit of uh, gun wash, which is pretty much some paint thinner. Just rub those areas ever so slightly and everything will be good and clean and look pretty much like factory. A Little bit of thinner in there on a shop towel. 